folks, welcome back to the shop. Frank here. I've got just a little bit more work to do on the forklift build. So as you can see, we've got the Cub Cadet garden tractor, mounted a forklift assembly on the back of it, turned it around, got the steering station back here. So what was once the front is now the back. So we've had this out and uh, tested the forklift function. Everything works good. Last thing we have to do is the counterweight system. So we've got the counterweight frame started here. We've got these horizontal members on both sides. We're going to put the front plate on here. I've just got a clamp on it right now and um, install the counterweight. So stick around. Let's see what we can get done. So these are what my weights look like in uh, Fusion 360. Here's the difference between a worn nozzle and a new one. I just finished cutting this out on the plasma table. So this is going to be uh, the front of the counterweight assembly. So this is my first attempt at uh, cutting lettering out. It was fairly straightforward to do it in Fusion 360 modeling it. Uh, the one issue is because some of these openings are rather small. You need to make sure that your entry and exit direction and distance is such that it can still go in and cut these cut these small openings easily. So I had to play with the size of the lettering a little bit. This I think is inch and a half lettering and it was about the smallest that you could reasonably do, I think. But and this is of course stencil font, which you know you kind of need, I guess, if you want the lettering to look right. And unless you go in and put webs or tabs in the lettering to get the lettering to hold hold together. A um, little bit of slag on here from the entries but it just comes right off with your fingers. Um, so I'm just going to, there's a little more dross on the back here. I'm going to clean this up, hit it with the uh, sander wire, or the grinder sander, and uh, we'll fit it up to the tractor and weld this on. Then we'll move on to cutting out the weight plates from 3 8 inch steel. I got a major steel delivery uh, the other day so I've got uh, uh, plenty of plenty of sheet steel now uh, one thing one shining one bright spot in the in uh, the economy is that the price of steel is coming down it's uh, less than it was it's uh, about 20 percent, 15, 20 percent less than it was um, five, four, three or four months ago. 
And then, and at that point, it was substantially less than it was a year ago. So it's probably half what it was um, 18 months ago. So the, during the height of the pandemic, there was a shortage and supply lines were strained and had trouble getting steel apparently. So the price was, was much higher. All right, so that's the little bit of good news. All right, I'm gonna clean this one up. For those of you that haven't you know, really seen me clean up or may have questions about cleaning up plasma cut material, there's always a little bit of slag on the back of what you cut out. Now this is this is uh, three sixteenths, and I tend to get more slag on this than I do on quarter inch. I'm playing with this cutting speed a little bit to try to reduce it. The whole idea of reducing slag on the back or dross, as they call it, is to have the proper cutting speed. And I figured it out for quarter and three eighths, but three sixteenths, I'm still messing with it. It's just, um, you can see it here, little blobs of molten metal. And as long as you push it away toward the edge, from the center of the plate toward the edge, it falls right off. So just, I have, this is just a very stiff putty knife and it's what I use to knock the slag off. Um, I've got some around the lettering. So it's usually a good idea to go around the edges, uh, make sure you don't have any burrs, uh, and using a sanding disc like this, a flap disc, doesn't create burrs like using a grinding wheel. If you use a grinding wheel, then it tends to turn a burr on the edge and make it a, make it very sharp, and you can cut yourself. So, um, all right, this is. I think ready to fit up to the tractor. Of course, it'll get painted uh, after we weld it on. So let's go see how this looks. Oh, look who's here. <laughs> My butchie boy. What you doing, huh? Huh? Yeah? Coming to check on me? Alright, go on. Sit. Sit. 
Sit. Sit. You don't want to sit. <laughs> Trying to figure out what I'm doing, huh? All right, that's a good boy. <laughs> I'm just putting some clamps on here to catch the bottom corners to hold this. In place. So of course this panel nameplate here is not really structural. Uh, it does hold the two side supports together. Uh, keeps the it'll keep the weight plates from falling off, sliding off. But the the real structure is in these three quarter three eighths inch plates, which will support the the weights. All right, let's go. We'll maybe clean this, clean these welds up just a little bit, hit them with a grinder, smooth them out on the outside. Um, got good welds down the, good fillets down the inside. So we'll just touch those up a, a bit.
Now what are my puppies doing in here? Yeah. And my good Brutus. Gucci. Nice day outside today. Trying to get at the sheet of steel square to the table. So these are what my weights look like in uh, Fusion 360. So here I've got a pair of them nested and I hope to be able to cut them out that way. I also generated G code for a single plate. Now this is what I'm going to cut out first. Single plate just to see how it fits and uh, based on my calculations uh, it should weigh 20 to 23 pounds. So um, if we cut 18 of these out we'll have our uh, counterweight they're approximately 16 inches square, just under 16 inches square, like 15.75. And here it's saying the width I need for the cut is 15.81 by 15.98. And that's close. The reason for that is it's got the entry up here. So all right, we're going to set the zero, work zero, down in this corner here. First, I want to check the electrode and nozzle. 
for where. Unscrew the work nozzle here. So this holds the nozzle on. This is the outer nozzle. It has very small air holes around it. The actual plasma torch nozzle is here. And can see this one's worn a little bit and then this is the electrode it's worn a little bit as well just to be on the safe side if you if you use a nozzle and it gets too large then the air is not focused and you tend to lose cut quality so I generally when I'm getting ready to do a run of cuts I'm gonna change out the nozzle and the electrode. Here's the difference between a worn nozzle and a new one. And a worn versus a new electrode. Now this one's not badly worn, could probably be, be used. You know, I'm not an expert on this. Some of you guys that use these plasma tables may, you know, may probably know a lot more than me. I tend to default to changing these so that I don't have issues, you know, that mess up a, a cut process that mess up, messes up a sheet of steel. And you can see the the actual nozzle here. I think I could reuse the electrode and just put a new uh, nozzle on it because the nozzle hole gets erodes, and the electrode I think will last last longer. But I tend to just change them both out at the same time. be on the safe side. I have a whole drawer here. My used electrodes and I have packed packs of the new new electrodes and nozzles. Now these are the name brand ones and you know they run about $25 for a pack of five so it's basically $10 to change the nozzle and the electrode. I've also purchased them in in bulk from you know another, other suppliers like on eBay, weld shops and stuff and they're like half the price and they seem to work pretty well I haven't done a direct one-to-one -one comparison. It's pretty tough to mimic the results, mimic the process. Okay, let's get the I do have this Bluetooth keyboard which I use, which is a lot easier to run the torch around. And that's pretty close. All right, so we set that in fire control. We set that, we zero the axes there. We set the program origin. I'm going to set it down in this 
corner. You can set it, you know, any of the various places. So we're ready to go. The axes are zeroed. All right, looks like everything is good here. All right, I need to charge the air system, and I'm going to add a little more water to the table. I like to bring it up to about a quarter inch below the edge, so it needs a couple gallons more water. Water evaporates over time from the table. Now when I don't use a table for you know uh, for more than a few days, if I'm not going to use it in the next day or two, I'll go ahead and drain it to the storage tank down here. And I just pull the two drains and it drains into the storage tank and then I pump it back up into the table when I'm ready to use it again. The table is filled with a 5% solution of Plasma Green 1050, which is an additive which prevents corrosion, rusting, and biologic growth like mold or mildew in the water and it doesn't deplete. Water evaporates but it leaves that component behind. So all you really need to do is add makeup water. I've had the same um, mix in this table for a year and a half and I just add water plain water to it and it's fine. It drains back to the tank and then I'm sure there's sediment in the tank but there's filters in the drains which prevent most debris from going to the tank and then I can pump it back up from the tank to the table, clean the table out periodically when it dries out and it's probably due for that now. All right, let's cut, um, let's, I need to, <laughs> can't cut anything right now. I need to go charge the, turn the air compressor on, bring you back when I get the system charged. Go see if this fits. Perfect. Perfect fit. Let's cut a couple more. So I've rotated it in the program 180 degrees so that I can nest. These uh, two arms will fit against the other one, use less material. I am uh, going to be cutting it close on the material so I can actually set the origin inside the arm of this one.
All right, I just need to make sure that the travel is sufficient to cut the next plate. The I think the capacity of the machine is like 47 in a fraction inches, not quite 48 inches. So I just need to make sure that I could get all the way to the edge. So I ran it on the program. I've turned this one 180 degrees again. So it should nest properly.
All right, so there's the counterweight. It's uh, about 400 pounds. I think it's 396 pounds by my calculation. Push the plates together a little bit. There's still room for one or two more plates, but I think uh, our target of 400 pounds is, is met. I'm going to turn the tractor around, bring it back in, and see about picking up this skid, this um, furniture dolly. It has two rear axles on it. I'm going to say it's at least 400 pounds. So we'll just pick that up. Don't have anything handy right now, any heavier than, than that, I don't think.
So that's at least 500 pounds. And uh, two transmissions, one hydrostat, one axle, and it's you know, about the middle of the forks. I had no problem picking that up. All right, folks, so we picked up five or six hundred pounds of uh, transmissions on a pallet, no problem. 
came out here, drove it around a little bit, picked up an empty pallet. <laughs> you know, no major accomplishment there, but uh, it does show the functionality. So it seems to be working fine. Uh, I still need to take the plates off and prime them. I've mostly finished painting, but I do need to pull these plates off. I get a nice day outside, lay them out on a couple of sawhorses, stretch between a couple of sawhorses and prime them all. I think I'm just going to paint them all black and uh, paint the Cup Cadet thing on the front yellow. I've got to put the footrests back on. I took them off. Uh, I think I'm going to cut new footrests out of aluminum diamond plate. I've got a couple pieces of aluminum diamond plate. So we'll, and I, somewhere here in the rack. So I do, I have a couple pieces of diamond plate. I'm going to model them in Fusion 360 and basically cut out two of these, or mirror images, two of these uh, foot rests, foot pads. I think that'll look cool. I did spend a couple hours this morning cleaning out the plasma table. I replaced the slats with new slats. They were well worn. They were a year and a half old, same slats I've had. And I cleaned all the debris out of the out of the table. So it's uh, in good shape. I figured my this project is nearly done. I think we'll come back next week doing just a couple more things. I had the steel delivery guy a week ago. Let's see what's today. Today's Wednesday. It was last Friday and I brought him in the shop and I showed him. I said next time you come I'll be able to take everything off the truck with my new forklift. Uh, currently using my front end loader and the magnetic lifter to lift a sheet at a time off. Take Lift a, one sheet off, bring it in, set it on the floor, go get another one mag with the magnetic lifter, lift it off the back of the truck, put it on the floor. And then I pick them up off the floor with the plate dog and, and, and put them in that rolling rack you saw me pushing around a little while ago. So. All right, got a few more. Got some paint touch up to do, and we'll come back next week um, with a couple of uh, follow up items that I need to take care of. And uh, we'll run it around some more. All right, so thanks for watching. Leave a comment, subscribe, ring the bell, thumbs up, all that good stuff. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time.